Welcome to the Flaming Greek, the hottest cooking show on the planet. Watch the hilarious duo cooking up adventure with the help of the torch. <laughs> Watch the Flaming Greek and Cami on Foodie TV. www.theflaminggreek.com. This is one of the rooms that we have out of six or eight rooms in the facility. It's our meat hanging room. And in the meat hanging room, all the cattle that we bring in. Is basically on a truck that swings fresh hanging. Right. So we roll it off the truck and we reel it into this room. So it comes into this room hole, and then as we need to, we bring it into our production room and then we process it there. Once we cut it down into smaller parts, if we're going to be selling it, it goes to a packing area. Right. If we're not going to sell it right away, we bring it back into this room so we give the, the opportunity for restaurants like Peter Luger's, Wolfgang's. Um, Smith, uh, Keen's Chop House, yeah, they'll, not. they'll come in and they'll stamp their own meat. Gallagher's who comes in and stamps their own meat. Right. They do it weekly. How old is this animal right here from well, slaughter? All these animals here that we get are between 20 and 24 months. Sometimes 25, 26 months, depending on the type of heat and time of year. Because the warmer the climate, the less they eat because of the temperature, the weather. Right. So they need to be maybe on feed a little longer yeah. to get the right weight. But during the winter time, they're eating, they're drinking. Usually, it's between 20, 24 months. And how long for the slaughter? How 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 long? Since they've been slaughtered, how long? Well, no, they, we got this meat this morning and yesterday. Oh, and this was yesterday? no, it would have been slaughtered on Friday. Friday. Okay. And then you know it, it hangs and they, they they load it, truck it. So four, four, five days. Four, five days. Yeah. Is this as fresh as you're gonna get yeah, it? Yeah, that's fresh. You're right. We the, the one staple that we have as masters over most of the companies is that we get the meat here fresher than anybody else. They're still getting meat in a box yeah, exactly. right. from a warehouse. Right. They may have come two thousand miles. Or drove. That's maybe the been sitting in a warehouse for another week or so. But we get it fresh right off the kill Not floor. Not frozen either. Not frozen. Right. So that's what makes everything about our product. From the steaks, the chops, from the roast beefs to the, even the hamburger, everything is fresh, right? So you can't get it fresher. Plus, we're one of the largest prime meat distributors in the East Coast. So the meat that we grind is prime. Right. So you're getting not only a fresh piece of product, you're also getting a prime product. You know? So it's really adding one one better the value goes value up. on top of another. Um, so if we walk this way, let me show you. Great. And you talked about different steaks, right? To, to right. grill inside this carcass, this is the forequarter. This is the front end of the animal, right? Front end. And you can see these are all the rib cages. Yep. If you remember in Rocky, Rocky he showed you one side. So this right? Alone. Yeah. He was showing one side, this side, and he said he was, he was punching punching the meat. Right. And then you you saw the meat on the other side, right? Broken to the bones. Right? Right. But in reality, but actually, right. didn't it's not know. happening. It's not, it's not happening. <laughs> but, yeah. On TV land. <laughs> a truck, but not rocking. But, so this is like the rib out here, no? Yeah. Yes. So this over here, this section here, is the rib section. Right. This is your tomahawk, your cowboy steaks. Everything comes from here. The rib ends over here, and the front end over here is your plate and your brisket. Your pastrami's come out of here, your corned beefs. Right. Your briskets, everything's in the front. And what's nice in making a burger is that this breast of the sear has a softer fat, mm -hmm. which means it, the fat will burn faster. So if you're using, let's say, a smaller burger or a slider, right. like a uh, two ounce or three ounce, it's good to use the brisket section because it doesn't have to be on the grill as long and the fat will still melt faster, right? In the flavor. So, and the flavor again, Marble. it's added. So fat will always add flavor. Always. Right? Always. Yeah. So this is the brisket and the, and the pastrami section. And in the front, this is where we basically get our chuck. You know, you know what's chuck made of? Chuck, right? Right. This is this chuck. And inside this piece of meat here, the chuck is the sweetest 
part flavored of the whole animal. So it's Chuck good to have chuck and then mix with something else. So if you want to, let's say, uh, a blend, like we do, we've been doing JG Mellon for over 40 years. And my father designed the, the formula for them. It's proprietary, right? And we've been selling them the same formula for the, for the last 40 some odd years. And they have different sections of the steer that make up their blend. Interesting. And, and the chuck is the sweetness. And we add other items that say porterhouse tail, which comes from the short loin, the, from the plastics. I can show you what that looks like. Yeah, yeah. This over here is the short loin. You know the porterhouse steaks? Yeah, beautiful. If, if it doesn't look familiar from that side. No, yeah. I, I see what you, you see? I, yeah, no, you have I. the filet you have the short loin. Well, this is the porterhouse. Now up in here, this is called the porterhouse tail. We take this, which is nice and rich, in meat and marbling. We take that, we mix that in with our chow mix. Beautiful. We mix it also with maybe a couple of other cuts right. that add to the flavor profile. Yep. And depending on whether you're on a flat top, which sears faster, right. you don't need as much fat, so your leanness would be, let's say a leaner brown, so an 85-15 on a flat top. And if you were working with, let's say, a fire grill or a torch, you might want to go with an 80-20 or a 75-25 because you're torching and you're going to wind up burning a lot of that fat out. Wow, look at the wobble. I am. See, this is all prime. Yeah. And we set wow. this meat up in this room, so now the restaurants are saying us to come look at it and take whatever they want. Right. We have an open door policy. See, we're, we're proud of what we do. Right. We're not embarrassed and there's nothing to hide. Like there's nothing to hide. Right, so we have an open door policy. Right. We want our customers to come see it. Because all this meat, one piece is just well, that would be my piece right here. nicer than the next, right? Any of it, yeah. And my, my competitors, they really can't do the same thing. Because right. they don't handle the same volume of prime that I handle. To give you an idea of what, what we do, and my, de my father developed, we've been in business for 57 years. And we've been known as being a prime distributor. There are about two to three percent of the United States grading. Right. You know the select choice and prime for right. the USDA. Prime is only about two to three percent of the entire country's production in prime. So every week, let's say there's uh, whatever they, yeah, they process, right, right, right. there's only twelve thousand to fifteen thousand cattle. Right. Out of the six hundred thousand cattle that we process, it's deemed to be prime by the USDA. And you got it. Well, no, not, we don't get all the, no. I mean, out of 50 states in the country, out of 300 million people, two to three percent is prime. Right. So out of all the animals that they process for the week, 12 to 15,000 head a week are deemed prime by the USDA. Half of that are cattle that, don't, that we wouldn't even look at. Either they're too old, let's say they're 30 months or 32 months, where they, by USDA standards, have to be boneless meat, and all this meat's bone in. Right? Yeah. You need porthouse, it has to be bone-in, right? Right. So right. we're not interested for the steakhouses to give them boneless meat, they need bone-in meat. Right. So of the half that we're not interested in, it's either, either too old or it's of a breed that we're not interested in buying. We get the best breed in the country. It's Angus cattle. Angus or Angus influenced cattle. Out of 87 breeds of steers in the country, the best one is Angus. There's only four bovines that we're really interested in. It's Angus, Hereford, Shorthorn, and, and, and red, red and Black Angus. That's it. And of the 12 to 15,000 cattle, only 7,000 cattle are, have that Angus influence in it. We probably are responsible for taking about 600 to 700 of that cattle. We may not take the back end, or let's say the rounds, the top right. rounds, or the roast beefs, but the short loin and the rib, which is the most popular. And because we now own ship here, we ship to California, to Hawaii, to Florida, to Chicago. Um, we are cutting steaks for RPM Steakhouse in Chicago. Korea, Korea too? We know, we've, we've had a couple of steakhouses in the United States that opened in Korea and Japan. We're shipping out a Japan product. So we're extending our quality of our product, not only in the United States, but to elsewhere around the globe. It looks delicious. I have a group of, um, uh, businesses coming from Japan this Sunday. 
I'm meeting with them here, 18, 18 separately owned businesses. Right. Coming from Japan to see how we age product. Very interesting. You can come follow me, we'll show you the production room. He's actually boning out a top button. It's from, it comes from the hip. But notice how he bones out the top butt, but he leaves the top butt intact on the, the, the hip on right. the other side. So this is the top butt, and on this side is the filet mignon, the head of the courthouse, right? the hip side. Right. So we take this, and these are all prime. Right. And we cut steaks, a bone and fillet. So we can get a bone and fillet by taking this and cutting it this way. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't think by looking at it, but... There's a filet right there. No, I know, but I mean, as you get into it further, you wouldn't realize that. Now that's prime. Now we can do bone and fillet from the shoreline, okay? What they're working on right there, those are shorelines. You can take the shoreline out of the, the shoreline. Right. Make it a 180. Right. Boneless 180. Right. And then you can cut steaks from the other side with this bone and fillet. From, you wouldn't take a prime shoreline, destroy it. Right. To get bone and fillet. Because it's 25 pounds at $10 a pound. Right. $250 just for that piece of meat. Even numbers. Just to, right, so it wouldn't make sense to do that. So most people do bone and fillet. We'll take something choice or lower. And do it. To get a bone and fillet. Because then, at that time, they're saying a bone and fillet, they don't even tell you it's select enough. Yeah. Right. Thank you. And that's, that's what we call a head. Now, wait one second. I like steak too. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of eat a lot of it. Yeah. When you do, it's got to be a good yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly right. That's the way I do it. I'm not going to go eat no steak. I'm going to eat a bowl of green. I do a lot of fish. I am a meat. And that's what you got. Isn't that beautiful? Now, Guys, can you get a close-up of this? So you can take this. Now, I would, now naturally, I would take this. Right? And I would, you know, basically take the fat off, right? Silver. That's beautiful. Perfect. And you get no better than that. And that's point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also point. So if you're not breaking whole cattle like we do, right. the best that another restaurant might do is get something that's choice or lower. Right. But they're buying bone and point for me. I can either give them choice from a short line, right. or you can prime which is better, the best grade you can get. And the mowing, look at the fat's gonna melt into it. That's a great piece of meat, right? But you know, if I may say this, we were talking yesterday about olive oil fraud, because there's a lot of olive oil fraud and fish fraud. There's also beef fraud, because the average consumer that walks into a, a restaurant that's serving supposedly prime beef, who would know the difference? They don't. They don't. Yeah, you would. Right, but you see it from the... Yeah, from the, head, the cow's mouth. If you want to come step this way, I'll show you what yes, we find. So, we were just talking about, you know, different things that we do. But making a burger, ground beef, and a hamburger is something that we also specialize in doing. You know, we don't do hamburgers for, like, for the masses. Right. You know, you're not going to find my hamburger in a, in a chain store. A&B. Right? Or a, uh, a fast food that hamburger part. joint. Right? Even let's say, let's say, uh, like, I don't know if I can say, you know, your Burger King, your McDonald's, your, your Wendy's. That's not who we sell to. Right. And even restaurants, regular restaurants, more of the mill restaurants, not non-white tablecloth restaurants, probably wouldn't want to buy my product because it may be too expensive. Because mm. everything I'm grinding is all prime. Yeah, but it's, From, it's good stuff. It's the best stuff. So, and the reason why it's, it, I say it's the best, that we go beyond, way beyond the normal standard to make hamburger. So what makes us 
special, even, even just the, even the hamburgers that we make and the ground beef, is that everything we grind is from prime meat. From the fresh cattle that we saw in the other room, and the meat that we're breaking and processing on a day-to-day -day basis, is basically the best grade. In the select choice and prime, in the United States, the Department of Agriculture is grading system. Select being the lowest and prime being the best. And that's basically what we get here is the best. If it's not prime, it would be certified Angus Beef Choice, which is, a, which is a program, a certified program, that says we're getting the best of the best of choice. So we're not really interested in getting the lower end of the yeah, spectrum. The best of the best. Right. Well, so, and we can't afford, even a simple thing as a burger, we can't afford to have our burger be mediocre. It can't be just regular. Because if, if, let's say, there are five people going to a steakhouse, go to, let's say, Peter Lucas, right. or to Smith Walensky, or Keens, or Wolfgang's, and they have, one out of five has a burger. And that burger's no good. I could risk losing the entire steakhouse as a customer. Right. Because one person yeah, says they didn't like the burger, and then the next time they go out to dinner, then they tell their friends on it. Right, oh, let's go somewhere else. So I can't risk losing a big steakhouse because of a burger. So what we do is we also not only do our own fresh growing, but we also have a filter on our ground beef. This system right here pulls out all the sinew and all the, maybe any fragment that's not, that shouldn't be part of a burger that makes your eating experience better. Like a bone maybe? A bone, a bone chip. But a lot of burger companies will chop everything up into right. sawdust, making a burger so they get all the weight. Yeah. We lose about 4% of all our chow meat, we throw into the garbage. So is this a blend of like chuck and filet mignon that you're using? Well, we, we use a blend of chuck, some straw rib, right. and this particular blend, some, some brisket, right. um, to give it some leanness to right. it, right? And if you're working with, let's say, a uh, flat top or a small size burger, this would be a good blend. And the texture would be different than a regular burger. Yeah, yeah. and the texture is also different. So the, the key behind this, is that we remove 4% of all the product goes into the waste can. We don't want Yeah. See? It almost looks like, like, like noodles. Wow, so it actually takes no, out everything. See this? You see all that there? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what they don't want. Some bad. Most people will not do that. It's a filter. How can I tell, though? We have, we have good question. There is, there, Cammy, there is a group on the inside. Uh -huh. Let me just show you something. This here, oh. this dye plate uh -huh. has a groove on the inside of the plate, oh. a little channel. So as a piece of grizzle or sinew or bone hits that canal, it rolls it down through the canal and not through the holes. Can I have a dye plate? Give me a dye plate. Now all that what you call like waste, Mark, yeah. That, that looks very similar to what you would see in the supermarket that yeah. they would be That's selling it. Exactly like that. Doesn't it with the white and all that? The issue is that this is ground beef. Can I have a dye plate, please? Dye plate. In, in, in here, it's charming. But we don't go through the charming looking for the bone and the grizzle that got discarded. We just throw the whole thing out. That's 4%. Yeah. Thank you. So on the inside of our, of our dry go. plate is a channel. So once that piece of grizzle hits this plate, a knife comes by and scoops it into the channel oh. and throws it through the hole and out through the tube. Oh. So it doesn't go through the holes to come out into our char meat. It gets caught here. Wow. And, that, and most people don't do that. And that's what makes our ground beef special, is that I don't, I don't want to take a chance losing a steakhouse for a hamburger. So is your dad responsible for this process? Uh, we've been working with this for a very long time. I, I don't know where it originated right, from. Right. Well, it uh, I'm sure this is manufactured by the company. Right. But we, and, Would you? You know, they have, everyone has an option to buy this kind of dye plate. Right. But you're getting you know, a low profit. Yeah. Right. They have an option to buy it. Right. It costs more money to buy this dye plate. Right. But a lot it's of people worth, don't do it. It's worth it, though. Because well, you get the better, you know, you get all the good stuff, not the bad stuff. Chris, yes. $100 for that plate. Yeah, I believe it. It's reassuring that you got the, the, the cream of the cream, the farm. Right, so if you were going to go and eat a hamburger at a steakhouse, I would be rest assured that there'd be no complaint. Right. 
on a hamburger. Right. Now a hamburger sells, let's say, this kind of burger sells for, me, for four dollars a pound. An eight ounce burger is two bucks. I'm gonna risk losing a steak has it pays twenty, twenty-five dollars a steak for me. Right. Twenty-five dollars for a steak. Right. And they may buy a hundred. Right. I'm gonna risk losing a hundred steaks because a two dollar hamburger no. had something in it. So Everything about our company is quality first. Okay, so now I'd like to show you our dry aging room. And uh, dry aging it's is fair. a process where we keep meat inside a room for about three weeks, mm -hmm. and we let it sit naturally. We let it sit naturally. Go we'll go this way, Dad. Thank you. We let it sit naturally, and it becomes more tender over time. For a copy of any of the recipes that you've seen on today's program, please purchase the Flaming Greek and Kami Cookbook, a delightful, colorful page photo coffee table cookbook that will have you and your family enjoying these recipes in the convenience of your own home. Cook with the Flaming Greek. To purchase the cookbook, log on to theflaminggreek.com. The price is $44.95 plus shipping and handling. Offer made by the Flaming Greek Production.